Hey guys, it's good to see you all. Well, it's great to be seen by you all. I think I make that joke every time we get together in these uh, days where we haven't seen each other for a long time. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you guys soon. Hopefully uh, in the coming weeks, the next few weeks, we'll be able to uh, be together. Uh, we're waiting on news from the school district since the school year has ended. They're coming out with new uh, rules for summer on renting out their facilities. Uh, if that doesn't work out, if that's not going to happen for a while, we have some offers from some of my pastor friends and local churches that said that we can use their building. Uh, some of them have opened up. There's been a couple of churches that have opened up and they said we're totally welcome to use uh, their facilities. So that might be an option too uh, as we look forward to getting back together. Um, if you haven't watched some of the previous videos of uh, how we should treat one another when we're back together, how we uh, move through this time of coming back together. Uh, just go ahead and go back a few videos. There's uh, two of them or so, I believe, in the feed uh, that where I talk uh, significantly about uh, what it's going to look like coming back together, not practically, but uh, how we're going to treat one another and treat those who uh, maybe still are fearful of this co coronavirus. Uh, maybe uh, some of those who just want a hug. <laughs> so there's, there's many of us and we all come from different, uh, we all think differently and we all think it should look differently when we re-enter the world and, and start to get back to normal. So uh, hopefully we will be able to be back together for those of us who want to be physically present with one another and we'll continue to put uh, our videos online as we always have. <clears throat> It's Father's Day. Uh, happy Father's Day to you dads. Uh, I, it has been a good morning for me. I already woke up to some cards from my kids, uh, some cute handmade cards, very uh, creative. My kids uh, love crafting that way and it is a blessing as a father to have, uh, to know that they love me enough to take their time on their own without being prompted to uh, share their and express their emotion for their dad. Now, that being said, I know there are some of us fathers who don't get to be with our children, and that is heartbreaking to me. Uh, it's crushing. I know some of you, uh, the only thing you want to do is to be able to be a father to your child, and um, my heart is with you. Uh, the heart of our Father, God, is with you. And God is always working to restore. God is always working to bring back together. So what I would say to you in these moments is don't give up hope. Continue praying. Uh, continue expressing love in the ways that you have avenues to express your love. And uh, we will see what God will do when we commit our lives and our love to Him and to growing His kingdom and to loving our family and loving those around us. For those of us who maybe don't have our children in our homes, uh, this is a great opportunity to be a father to someone who does not have a father around. Um, in our home right now, I'm able to be a father to uh, a foster child. His name is Xander, and um, I'm learning many things about God, uh, which I hope to express in future messages going forward. Uh, God, is, God is opening my heart even more um, showing me new things about his love and uh, even though some of us cannot be with our own children for Father's Day or Mother's Day uh, usually it's fathers though if we can't be with them there are still young men and young women that we can pour our lives into and become a spiritual father and that for me as a pastor and as a friend to many of you uh, one of the greatest joys of my life has been able to be a spiritual father to uh, many of you, to uh, instill truth, to encourage, to show love, to hopefully model the heart of Jesus Christ uh, in building our kingdom, building God's kingdom here on earth. Uh, so happy Father's Day to you dads. I want to talk about uh, the heart of the Father today. Uh, in this time when, uh, just as I spoke about a minute ago, it, our views being so polarizing, some from one side to the other, uh, it's very easy to get caught up in uh, believing our truth or uh, what we have curated and forgetting that we as Christians and Christ followers have a way of following Christ. It's not so much the message, it is the message, but how we present the message 
that wins people's hearts and minds. It is that uh, the way that we hold our views and the way that we speak to others, the way that we treat them, the way we listen to them, that allows them to hear the truth that we have living inside of us. And right now, our society definitely needs men and women who will stand for truth. And what, again, what matters most is the way that we stand for truth. There are wrong ways to stand for truth, and I've seen this with uh, my kid and my kids. Uh, oftentimes, I will wrongly accuse my child of doing something because I've misinterpreted uh, the situation that's going on when I'm trying to come in and bring peace back into our home. And when I've misinterpreted, I'm always, uh, I'm always so pleased with my children when they respond back to my misinterpretation in loving kindness and say, Dad, that's not what happened. Instead of screaming and yelling at me and crying and throwing a fit because I got it wrong. It frustrates me when that happens. But the other way, it melts my heart and, I, and I'm so proud of them when they can be patient and calm, when they've been accused of something that was, uh, that was not a wrongdoing on their part, and when they can be calm and then explain peacefully to me, that means so much. And in these times where we all believe different things about what's going on in our world, the way that we can communicate those uh, to others is what's going to be able to change people's hearts and change their minds to being able to see truth, to be able to understand uh, what's really going on beneath the surface, how many of us are being manipulated in these times. So the way that we hold our views is just as important, if not so, maybe more important than the views that we hold, because it is the reflection of Jesus Christ who we are that allows us to begin to change somebody's heart. See, if we want to win the world over, we must hold our views like our Father, God, holds His views, how He presented them when He sent His Son, Jesus, to this earth. And I've learned so much about being a father from our Heavenly Father. And there's a few characteristics that I want to talk about from a passage that we find in uh, the book of Colossians. And if this passage isn't very timely, if it's not spot on for where we are in this world, I don't know what is. So if you guys will turn to the book of Colossians, either on your smartphones, maybe you're watching on your smartphones, grab your Bible, or you can just read along with me here. Colossians 3, verses 12 through 15 says this, Since God chose you to be holy people He loves, you must clothe yourself with tender-hearted mercy kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Make allowance for each other's faults and forgive anyone who offends you. Remember, the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, close your, clothe yourselves with love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ's rule in your hearts. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Now, there's some uh, characteristics in there I want to touch on just really quickly as we move through. The first part is the tender-hearted mercy. Now, there is this idea of mercy that each of us, I think we kind of understand when we are wrong and somebody gives us mercy. Uh, there's a way of giving mercy where uh, you can do it begrudgingly, or you can do it to restore. There's a way of tender-heartedly holding mercy and giving mercy to someone else because you want to win their heart, because you want to show them loving kindness. And the scripture is begging us to clothe ourselves with tender-hearted mercy. And the second one is kindness. You and I as Christ followers, the way that we speak our words to one another, the way that we interact online should be dripping with kindness, should be with uh, 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 um, in a manner of trying to understand the other. When we're in conversation, to try to win somebody over, the way that we hold our views and the way we interpret their view should, view should be done through a filter of kindness. We're trying to look for the best possible representation of the argument or of what they're trying to, uh, to, trying to teach us or trying to tell us or trying to explain to us. We, we should take the best possible view of that. And that is the kind way to hold it. And, and again, that moves right into humility. Humility is 
Like, it seems like nobody has humility in these days. We all, we all live like we know everything. Many of us do. I mean, uh, some of us, hopefully, we're growing in humility. I, I hope to be uh, more and more humbled because I realize that every human being that I come into contact with, I can learn something from because they've had different life experiences than I have. They, they see the situation differently. Many of you, they're, they're part of the reason I love the other uh, people teaching, some of the women in our church teaching and some of you others teaching is because I've experienced life and the Christian life differently than many of you have. And I want those other perspectives because I'm humbled by how God's grace and mercy is large enough to encompass all of us and bring us in. How Jesus can meet us right where we are. Not just me, who grew up in a two-parent home in a suburban area with uh, it, it, most everything at my fingertips. I, I wasn't well off, but the reality is I'd never lacked for anything. I always had everything that I needed, and that's still the position that I find myself in. I have everything that I need. Not everything that I want, but everything that I need. And the reality is that if we all have a little bit of humility, we might be able to understand others. If we can grow into having a lot of humility, we probably can empathize with others and put ourselves in their shoes so that we can see things the way that they do and then walk hand in hand with them towards truth. Humility is so lacking in our society right now. Nobody ever admits to being wrong. It's, it's, it's sickening. It, it's, it's actually a disease that we have as uh, Americans, it seems, is that we have zero humility and it makes us uh, so unlikable to other people. He, one of my greatest, I was talking to my neighbor yesterday about uh, one of my greatest UFC fighters, uh, one that I like to watch, Anderson Silva. He was such a great fighter and, and still is in many ways today. He's getting older and he's not the man that he once was. But the reality is what I liked most about him is that when he would defeat an opponent, he would always go and encourage them, almost always go and encourage them. Oftentimes he would kneel down and thank them for the bout that they just got to have. He had so much humility in the way that he uh, interacted in the sport, in a sport where uh, that is very uncommon. And us as Christians, where we find ourselves in a world that is very uncommon to have humility and to show a bit of humility, that is something that we can shine to a lost world that's a beacon of light to other people. It, it, just to say, you know what, I'm not, I'm not sure I'm so right on that. Like I've said to you many times, there are many times that I've said, you know, I know a lot of things. It's, the problem is I don't know which things that I know are true. I don't know which ones are right. And that's part of this journey of life I'm trying to understand, but it takes a dose of humility to realize in any situation that I don't know all the answers. I don't know what it's like coming from your perspective. So if we could all take a bit of humility, I can't overstate it. I can't overstate this idea of, of uh, exhibiting humility and how much that can win people over as to the views that we have, to the truth that we find in God's word. So the way that we hold our views humbly to others and share them and not try to force them down or tell people that they're wrong, that can win somebody's heart and someone's mind. The next thing that it talks about in here is being gentle. Uh, I've learned something by being a father that oftentimes when I stand above my children and rain down words of uh, whatever it is on them, trying to correct them or change their behavior, uh, oftentimes they become very defensive. But I've noticed that if I call them over and I put them on my lap or I get down on my knees and I just explain to them, here's why I think it could have been done a different way. When I'm gentle with them and I show them kindness and I get on their side as, and, and I don't oppose them, but I come alongside them to correct them, they learn so much. And in this world, if we can be kind, tender-hearted, humble, and show mercy, we can do it with gentleness. I think we can win over a culture. It doesn't happen immediately. The next characteristic it talks about in here is patience. And 
This is something you definitely have to grow in as a parent. If you are a parent, you know, or any person for that matter. I mean, we all think, you know, I'm going to get a job and it's going to happen on my timeline and it just doesn't happen. And we have to learn to be patient. Now, patience when dealing with others is incredibly useful to help somebody understand uh, the truth that you're trying to, uh, to give them, to show them. So being patient. All of these are, I believe, come straight from the heart of the Father. That, that it's not just the truth of the Word of God that is going to transform hearts and minds. It's how we present the truth. And Jesus is that perfect example as He went around showing loving kindness, tender-hearted mercy, patience and forgiveness and kindness to others, and humility. He was God, and He humbled Himself and came to this earth. The next thing it talks about is making allowances for others' faults. I hope you guys will do that with me and I choose to do that with you because I know that we're human and we all fail. We all have faults and we all uh, make mistakes from time to time. The reality is that we all need to give allowance for each other's faults and then forgive those who we've been offended by. The forgiveness uh, oftentimes is the bridge that can bring people back together. Forgiveness is that uh, open door to s regain uh, a level of friendship and confidence in one another again. And it says, let the peace that comes from Christ rule your hearts. We don't internally have the peace to rule our hearts. It's this peace. It's being in a relationship with Jesus Christ that gives us this peace that can rule our hearts, that allows us to be tender-hearted, merciful people, kind, and have humility and gentleness and patience with others. It is a blessing and a gift from God that comes through deep relationship and surrender to Jesus Christ that allows us to be salt and light to a world that is living in darkness. We have to walk in this, uh, we have to walk in this peace that comes from Christ and allow it to rule our hearts, to take over our hearts, to, to change our hearts and minds so that we don't have to uh, get even, but we can uh, build bridges to rectify and reconcile relationships. See, love can be confusing. What seems loving can, though, can actually be harmful. What I, what I mean by that, this, there's, there's a way of being loving that is harmful if you let your children do anything and you let them go out and play in the street, if you let them uh, eat candy all the time, if you let them do whatever, if you do not discipline children, it is actually harmful. And I feel as though the church has lost... Um, it's influence in culture, and we're allowing the world to do harmful things. And some of us are doing it in a way in the name of tolerance and love, but it's actually not tolerant. It's actually not loving to allow people to do and walk in ways that are going to potentially harm them, who are ev that are eventually going to harm them. So, uh, the things that I've talked about this morning are so important because we do have the truth, and knowing the truth will set us free. But the way that we hold that truth and the way that we, if we lord it over people and try to ram it into their brains and into their hearts, they will reject us faster than anything. But the reality is, if we are kind and loving and have tender-hearted mercy and we're patient and we're gentle with those who are around us and that we come in contact with, then we have the opportunity to lead people to loving Jesus Christ who has changed each and every one of our lives and continues to change our lives. See, in our great nation, though, we have many problems. The, the underlying problem is that so many don't adhere to the wisdom that God has given us, these things that we've just talked about this morning. And we need to model it. You and I need to have conversations, not so much online. I, I, I don't think people are changed so much online. The reality is uh, our world is going to be changed in one-on-one -on -one interactions, like not that we're having right now, but in conversations with one another. In, in our living rooms, at the workplace, over lunch, um, <clears throat> 
out on the streets when we're just walking and talking with friends, the, the conversations that we have that are pointed, uh, where we're trying to inject wisdom into a situation, uh, not being overtly political uh, or trying to cram down our views on somebody, that's when people's, that's when the seed of hope can be planted in the fertile soil of someone's heart. And then as we continue in those relationships, showing, shining the light of God's truth, and doing it with mercy and watering it with mercy and grace, that that uh, seed of hope can begin to grow in their lives. See, we need to show loving kindness in our conversations. And if our society is to survive, we must learn to talk with one another, respect one another, find common ground, and stop demonizing the other. The other people are not bad people. They're not bad people. We are all God's children. We are all broken and we are all lost, but we're not bad. And God sent his very own son to redeem those broken and lost, hurting people. And it's our job. It's our job, Christ followers, believers in Jesus Christ, to love them to show them tender-hearted mercy and kindness, gentleness, and patience. To this Father's Day, we need to embody the characteristics of our great Father, the one who modeled it all by sending His Son. And men, if we are going to pass on the benefits we have enjoyed, we must learn to work with others and stand for truth. The truth that we've talked about this morning, that God's ways are the best ways. The way that God does things is the best way that God that, that we should do things. And, and if we are going to pass on what we've had, these benefits of life, then we have to stand up for truth, but we have to do it in a loving way. There's a right way and a wrong way to hold truth. And this way, the heart of our Father, is the right way to hold the truth. We have to be a unifying force when all the rest of the world, social media, seems to be tearing us all apart. We, Christ followers, have to be the unifying force. We have to be the glue that brings everyone back together. So unity doesn't come through anger and punishment. It comes through love. It comes through mercy. It comes from grace. It comes through patience. It comes through kindness. It comes through gentleness. It comes through love. And you and I, men and women of God's kingdom, have to learn to be more like our Father on this Father's Day. A loving Father. And I do believe that in conversations with those that we know, we can begin to tip the scales and to save the goodness that is part of our society. We can be the ones who restore back to a better way of life than the current situation that we find ourselves in. Guys, I know this can happen because it's happened throughout history. It is God's church and God's kingdom that brings it all back together. And if you look to the end of the book, it is God's kingdom that grows and thrives and continues on. So let's be those Jesus people. Let's be the dads like our loving Father, God. Let's be women who embody these characteristics of our loving Father, God. And let's make Jesus look incredibly beautiful to a lost and dying world. I love you guys. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for your wisdom God, I'm so encouraged to know that your truth continues on and that your word continues on and that your truth can find fertile soil in the heart of any man, woman, or child and it can grow into something beautiful. That hearts and minds can be changed by the power of your love and your Holy Spirit. God, I pray that we would embody these characteristics of your heart that we have spoken about this morning. I pray that we would be able to present your message of truth to a lost and dying world. God, I thank you for all the fathers that sacrificially give 
to their families, to your kingdom, to our society. I pray blessing on them in this coming year. I pray that we will learn new things. We will grow in patience. We will grow in tenderhearted mercy. We will grow in kindness. We will learn to be more gentle. We have more opportunities to be more gentle and that we can present you to a broken world in a beautiful way because you are so good. God, we thank you and praise you for everything that you're doing in our hearts and in the hearts of those around us. Let us be shining examples of your love to your creation that you died for. And we ask these things in your name. Amen. I love you guys. I hope to see you in person very soon. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.